Hi everyone, um, you join me again here in the stores with a couple of interesting rifles. Look very similar, um, there's a reason for that, they are very closely related. Everyone will, I'm sure, be very familiar with the Lee Enfield series of rifles and we can extend that back to the Lee Metford that came before it. Um, that's why we tend to call it the Service Lee, British Service Lee rifle. Because it starts in uh, 1888 with the Lee Metford and the 303 cartridge comes in and it ends sometime around 1991, I suppose. Um, the cadet versions of the Lee Enfield were still in use until, well, very recently indeed. But it turns out that was not the first British Lee rifle. Uh, neither of these even, believe it or not. The story starts in 1879 when the War Office are uh, offered James Paris Lee's early attempt at a bolt action magazine rifle. That's the heart of this system. Um, so that, that magazine sticking out the bottom, um, that cock on close action, all the celebrated features of Lee Enfield all start round about 1879. Uh, Lee offers that system to the Brits, it's the biggest um, sort of government going at the time, and to the Americans, possibly to others as well. Both the Brits and the Americans are not keen. I, th I think it's a bit too soon for such an advanced, repeating magazine rifle. So rejected in 1879, normally you'd expect it to be a decade or more before, you know, um, we Brits rethink it and come back and maybe adopt a similar system or... or even the same system. In this case, it's only a couple of years later. So it's actually the Royal Navy who, uh, not of course a, a frontline infantry arm, famously, uh, tend to fight on the sea, but it's the Royal Navy, not the British Army, who realise that they are behind the curve. Britain is behind the curve now. Various nations around the world are looking at and adopting magazine repeaters. So we've had the bolt action rifle for a while, the Prussian Dreiser, for example, way back in the 1840s, but it's single shot. Um, Britain's had its Martini Henry for a while. Really a very good single shot um, uh, breech loading rifle, an excellent example of the type, but already we've had things like the Henry rifle come along and make it look a bit rubbish by comparison. In terms of capacity, capacity of one instead of you know six or more, five or more. Um, some, you know, the, the French Lebel uh, is around the corner in 1886. So all the nations are looking, looking at each other and what they're doing. And it's the Royal Navy who decide that they want to push ahead. So what, what they look at? Um, well, there's actually a, a, set, a set of trials. A new small arms committee is formed in 1882. And between 1882 and three, over 30 rifles are tested. I think it was 31 magazine rifles and a much smaller number of um, single loaders. So in other words, things that are no better than the Martini that they already have. Now, of those uh, 38 total rifles that were submitted, a huge trial, only three made it through. There's the Owen Jones, the Bethel Burton, and one of these guys. Now, the Owen Jones and the Bethel Burton look quite similar. They both used a side hopper type magazine, a little bit like the US Krag Jorgensen, uh, not the US originally, but the US service Krag Jorgensen that was adopted, where you kind of top the thing up from the side. The Lee famously had a box magazine sticking out the bottom of the stock and the action, which actually caused some uh, consternation for quite a while actually that being sheet metal, it would be vulnerable to damage. And of course, if you do dent a magazine, you can stop the thing from working, stop the whole gun from working, potentially. So what we're looking at here is the first, the first Lee rifle that, as far as I know, exists that was British trials and British made. Uh, wonderful markings on, uh, this is actually the second one, I'll explain that in a moment. Wonderful markings on there, you've got the Royal Cipher, uh, Enfield and the date, um, not only reminiscent of the Martini Henry that was already in service, but of, you know, muskets going back to, to brown bets. Um, it's a very kind of old school looking design, but at the same time, super modern. And I think you can see from, just from first impressions, it's kind of a Martini Lee. I would call it a Lee Henry for reasons that I'll explain. So the first version that was trialed, 
The actual name of it at the time was the Improved Lee. That's all they called it. Named after James Paris Lee, Scotsman who moved to Canada. And the first one was in uh, 4.5 calibre, but it wasn't 4.5 Martini, confusingly. It was 4.5 Gardner Gatling, which is a, a longer, slimmer cartridge case with very similar performance to the Martini. A little bit confusing, but that's what it was chambered in, and that's why they called it the Improved Lee. Um, now, interestingly, I think, I think interestingly, this actually looks a bit more like the later service Lee. It doesn't have that weird, uh, more martini-looking bit of metal action in the middle. Uh, but having said that, it's a one-piece stock. There's no uh, wrist band here, because on the Lee Metford that we did get, the buttstock is a separate piece that's attached into that action. But here, one-piece stock. This um, shares a number of features with not just the martini, but the 402 caliber martini, uh, which is interesting because this one is in 4.5 Gardner Gatling, as I mentioned, but we're coming to that. So um, experimentally, what they did, this didn't get introduced into service on the Martini, but experimentally, they relieved the wood around the barrel. And if you can see that there's air, there's an air gap. Um, that was to do with heating because black powder does can get quite hot. The ability to fire multiple shots before reloading will heat the barrel up. So they did experiment um, both on the 402 Martini and on this with a relieved stock. Of course, it might burn the shooter's fingers. Maybe that's why it wasn't adopted. I keep talking about the 402 Martini. Um, this is what ended up being the Mark IV Martini instead. So they came up with this experimental, what they thought of as small bore, called small, small bore, 40 calibers, not small bore by modern standards, but it was in the Victorian period. And this was a way to try to improve the Martini Henry, uh, make, the, make the, uh, the ballistics better. Smaller, faster bullet, flatter trajectory, more accurate, more powerful, actually. Um, the, you can sort of debate that one. And long story short, that, that didn't go anywhere, but it did mean that we had a 402 more modern cartridge than 4.5 Martini or 4.5 Gardner Gatling ready for the sort of Mark II version of this rifle. So this would have been the trials rifle that went head to head with the Owen Jones and the Bethel Burton. And um, it sounds sort of like a comedy double act. Um, and in this case, they sort of were because they, they failed. Um, the, the Owen Jones and this were deemed to be satisfactory to carry on to the next stage of trials. Uh, the Bethel Burton unfortunately had a number of issues. So the Bethel Burton was ditched and that was on the basis of, so extraction and ejection were unsatisfactory. The elevating spoon broke during firing, I'll be honest. I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, an improved action was proposed, but was not submitted. And so the Bethel Burton was rejected. So we've gone down from um, 38 rifles to three rifles, down to two rifles. Now, interestingly, uh, Smith, uh, senior officer who led this new small arms committee, the Royal Navy who had kicked it all off, and the director of artillery who was kind of had overall control of what was going on, all favoured the Owen Jones. So we're down to two rifles, but these guys aren't in the front running. Now Enfield, the factory, Royal Small Arms Factory at Enfield, stood to, to win regardless because they had made all of these prototypes and they would almost certainly get the licensed production to make the new Owen Jones or the new Lee rifle, whatever happened. Uh, maybe we'll show you some of the others in another video. So as a result of this, the Owen Jones was recommended for the usual 5,000 rifle troop trial production run. So 5,000 rifles to be made at Enfield. Um, but the, the superintendent of the Royal Small Arms Factory actually said no. He thought the Owen Jones was too complicated to, to meet that order, I believe, and by, extract, by uh, implication, for actual int introduction into service. So he's, in he's um, interrupting this conversation, these trials, and saying, that's no good, which is really quite an interesting move to make as the director of a, or the superintendent of a factory. You'd expect them to just do what they're told, but he doesn't, and he seems to have some significant sway. So the compromise solution here, recommended by the superintendent at Enfield, was to produce small numbers 
of improved versions of both rifles and try them again, give it another go. And that's exactly what happened. And we have a few results from that. So the Lee was found in this new set of trials to be simpler, which it clearly was, to be fair, uh, jammed less frequently, could have its parts replaced more easily. The detachable magazine was found to be an advantage, not a disadvantage, as the, uh, some elements have been concerned about. And uh, technically speaking, it was found to have a much more powerful extractor. Now, the upshot of these ongoing trials, remember these have been going on since 1882, um, all the way through to 1887. In the meantime, the French have already adopted the Lebel rifle, so we need to get a shift on. And on the 7th of February, 1887, the Lee rifle, as a concept, is approved for service, but only the rifle, not necessarily the magazine. Weirdly, we have, a, we have to now prove that the magazine is fit for service because we're hedging our bets and Bethel Burton's Hopper magazine is still being considered. If you look at what other countries are doing at this time, they are looking for a mixture of action type, magazine type, and then marrying that to a barrel with the appropriate rifling in it. So we're doing all of that. And long story short, the Burton magazine ends up getting set aside in favour of the Lee magazine. So this trials rifle does its job and it's uh, the others that would have existed at the same time. But there's another important change that needs to be made. I mentioned 402 earlier. Well, this 4.5 Gatling, uh, Gardner Gatling barrel was replaced, the chamber obviously being part of that, with the 402 calibre Henry Patton rifling barrel that's on this example. And so what we probably should call this, if we're thinking of the terminology that was adopted, where you have action rifling type, Lee Enfield, the Metford Martini Henry, this is a Lee Henry. That's what I'm going with. Um, it would, would have been known still at the time as the improved Lee, but that doesn't help us distinguish between these two. And it doesn't help us distinguish between that and any other Lee rifle. So I'm kind of retrospectively going to say it's a Lee Henry. Now this 402 cartridge, the primary purpose of this is not to improve the improved Lee, it's to improve the Martini Henry. So the Royal Navy are wanting a new rifle and you know, the other armed services are looking at this going, well, might be the future, but they're pressing ahead with the improved Martini. Uh, reducing the caliber down to 402, making the action much more robust. And if you've ever seen a Mark IV Martini, it has a very pronounced hump on the back of the receiver. Now that's because 402, spoiler alert, didn't pan out as a cartridge, not for this and not for the Martini. And so the Martini Enfield, as it would have been adopted, was binned. But the Mark IV Martini was still produced, but in its old 4.5 Martini caliber. It's all getting a bit complex, I know. So all of that might well make you think, is this the, the beginning of the Lee Metford Lee Enfield story? Well, sort of. It proves the Lee action, it proves the Lee magazine, but this rifle doesn't go anywhere. Um, I would say unfortunately, but we ended up with a very good service rifle instead. So having had this very positive institutional experience of this basic configuration winning some for very long formal trials, um, although Britain stuck with the old fashioned martini um, for a little bit, longer, it was only the following year that we had the redesigned Lee Metford um, with uh, the, the very interesting, almost Glock-like polygonal rifling of the Metford barrel, replacing the Henry rifle barrel on this, and a complete redesign of the whole gun. So superficially similar, the action works the exact same way. Um, you could hand it to the, you could hand the Lee Metford to the guys that ran the, you know, shot the trials, shoots, with this and they know exactly how it worked uh, but we go from five to eight rounds in the magazine partly because we have gone for a much superior cartridge type 303 the famous 303 um, which comes from switzerland and is probably a story for another time so let's have a, a closer look at these two examples so looking at the first pattern rifle the improved lee the 45 caliber one um, starting at the back we have 
re quite a recognizable cocking piece, old handle arrangement if you know your Lee Metfords, your early service Lees. That of course did change later, but it's interesting that uh, this is a feature that's carried over. So you can manually pull on that, it's very hard to do from this angle. Um, in terms of how it operates, it's exactly the same as the later Lees. Pull up the bolt handle, pull to the rear. It's got the same lugs and everything that the, the Lee Enfield has and Lee Metford have. Cocking piece, you can see the shape of that is very, very similar indeed. Cocks on closing, just like the later rifles so far, so identical to the Lee Metford. The bolt, of course, is bigger and chunkier because it's a larger caliber. That's kind of neither here nor there. Uh, now, important feature of the day was the cutoff plate. And I say of the day, this thing kept coming and going on Lee rifles in British service until the 1930s, would you believe? Now, for those of you who don't know what the cutoff plate is, uh, right now it's in place, blocking any cartridges in the magazine from feeding, so they can't be picked up by the bolt coming forwards. It's literally cutting off the magazine, turning it into basically a bolt action Martini Henry. So you would only be able to put a round in here, close it up and fire it. Deliberate fire, basically. Open, ejects the case automatically. Put in another round, close it up and fire it. So that's how you'd use this rifle, just like a martini. And then when ordered, you would pull out this plate. So out pops the plate, instantly have access to your five rounds, rapid fire and you can then operate this as fast as you can go. Now the second, second pattern of trials um, Lee Henry, as, as I've um, ostentatiously named it myself, is rather different, interestingly. Quite a design departure, sort of halfway through trials. We have, in a way, a more traditional looking gun, insofar as the Martini has that very visible chunky steel action, breaking up the silhouette of the gun, if you see what I mean. And now that gives a um, really nice canvas for the engraver to give us some traditional uh, martini style markings on here that are really, really nice, um, that aren't on, present on the earlier rifle. And also we have swapped, we've got the same pattern of magazine cut off, but we've swapped it to the other side, which makes much more sense. With a rifle like this, you are, you're not trying to hold it by the wrist and operate controls with your offhand because it's too front heavy. You really do need to be able to hold it at the point of balance and operate the catch like that. So it makes much more sense to have it on the right hand, hand side. Don't know why they didn't do that from the beginning. So that's the cutoff plate. When you think that at the beginning of this century, or you know, a, a pensioner, a Chelsea pensioner that comes along and observes the trials, let's say, don't know if that happened, you know, it's possible he was uh, at Waterloo with a flintlock musket. And, you know, here he is potentially seeing Maxim guns being fired, magazine rifles. The, the pace of change is just astonishing at this time. No safety on either of these, by the way. No mechanical safety. You would simply keep it uh, around, out of the chamber, and therefore decocked. And that's actually how the Lee Metford was brought into service that succeeded this and actually succeeded and was introduced. And then safeties were added to that, but no safety on this at all. Uh, this is my safety, effectively. Now that um, bit of metal work means we get these lovely markings engraved on the side in traditional fashion. And we have standard um, British military proof marks on there. And that's it for the markings. Caliber reduced to 402. Smaller bore. You only really see that if you put them side by side. It's funny to us these days, the difference between 445 and 40 caliber, it doesn't seem very much. To the conservative Victorians, that's quite a big difference. And then, of course, within a year of this trials rifle, of this trials rifle, uh, we have, we've got all the way down to 30 caliber, 303. And that's it really, not much more to say. Um, different sighting arrangements, they have made changes to the sights, primarily driven by the smaller bore, higher velocity 402 cartridge. But there you are.
the improved Lee and the Lee Henry. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do check out the description for ways in which you can help us here at the Royal Armouries. We have a donation scheme, we have a membership scheme as well. Um, most of all though, just keep watching, we have another one of these next week. You might also like to check out our social media, uh, Facebook and Instagram in particular, because this series of videos actually works with that. If you want to go over there and guess what it is that we're going to be talking about um, a bit later on, you can do that. So feel free to watch these standalone, but there is more, more fun to be had if you join in on our social media. That's all for me, guys. We'll see you again next time.